So you've managed to install Windows, upgraded some RAM and even changed a broken hard drive in a computer belonging to a friend or family. And you now fancy yourself as a computer or ID engineer. And you're thinking, man, I probably should start a computer repair business. But is a computer repair business dead? Or you're stuck in a rut, hate your job, feel undervalued and you want to be your own boss so that you can do whatever the heck you want. If that sounds familiar, I've got tips and strategies for both of these if you stay tuned. Roll the intro. Hey name tags, welcome. This is Ash from Hill My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. On this channel, we do repairs, reviews, and tutorials of tech, including sharing on top of our tips and strategies to help you unleash your true potential. In the description below, you will find timestamps for your convenience if you want to skip ahead to specific parts of the video. But I would be grateful if you watched the whole video at least the first time. Okay, back to today's topic. This is kind of a follow up to my previous video, which I talked about my origin story entitled The Pursuit of Degreeness. So check it out up there or in the link below. I talk about how I did not have any experience or training or qualification in tech and how I joined from a nursing background. So if you watch that and then come back to this, it will make more sense. But here is the first disclaimer. I am not the world's top authority on business or business setup. There are people far more experienced and far more successful. And what I do advise is you study it, take courses, uh, watch tutorials, read up and ask established business experts in their field. However, I am setting up, I do have a little bit of experience and I'm quite confident that the tips and strategies I'm going to give you today is quite relevant and is quite helpful and hopefully you will be able to confirm once you do get to your official resources. Also, although I will be talking about the computer repair business or industry, a lot of these tips and strategies are going to be relevant and applicable to any business field that you want to start. The golden first question. Is there a difference between self-employment and running a successful business? And what do you think I am doing? When I started, quite a lot of people asked me, how's my business going? And I used to tell them, I don't have a business, I work for myself. And they looked at me quite puzzled. And uh, I don't want to go into the official academic definition. I want to talk more about the layman's understanding and the misinformation that some people have regarding setting up a business. Example, if you're a cab driver or a shopkeeper or you buy and sell goods on Amazon or eBay, you are self-employed. You don't own a business. You're not running a business just yet. Meaning if you work, you get paid. If you sell something, you get money for it and you may get a profit if you haven't done any loss. When you don't work, you don't get paid. And that's called active income. You don't have sick leave, you don't have annual leave, etc. Starting to make sense? A business, on the other hand, is a process or a setup whereby whether you're there or not, the income, the money, the revenue is still coming in. And that's because you've either employed people to do the job or you've set up systems like automated system whereby the goods and services are being offered to the public in return for money. So for example, if you do own a shop, instead of you being the cashier, you should consider employing someone. So at the beginning, you may want to start working there yourself, but you need to pay yourself a wage, which will be the wage that you will eventually pay someone when you want to explore further things and uh, upskill your business. However, a lot of people, they start, they're gonna open a shop or they're gonna start uh, you know, cabbing or they're gonna start taking orders for food and uh, they end up working at it themselves because they want to save some money, they don't want to pay a wage. What they don't realize is they are working for themselves, they don't have a business set up properly, which means no work, no income, no money coming in. There go again, active income. Successful businesses, rich people, they are always on the lookout for what's called passive income. One example, if you buy a property, initially the cost of purchase is high and then you may have regular or occasional maintenance and repairs. However, once it's set up, the monthly rent you're going to get from it is called passive income. So I'm going to put a link below of a playlist of ways to make passive income to so make you check them out. However, don't get me wrong. If that's what you want, as in to be self-employed and you're not interested in setting a business or finding passive income means, then kudos to you. Go for it if you're happy with the fact that when you do take time off, you're not going to get paid. That's your choice, your life. Go for it. I just want you to avoid the mistake some people make by thinking they're starting a business when they're actually just leaving a job and being self-employed, which has its ups and has its downs. Okay, so like I mentioned before, when people ask me, why don't I just open up a shop 
you know, like a traditional high street shop with a banner, advertising, employ people, etc, etc. And I go to them, no, thank you, quite happy with what I'm doing because had I gone and opened up a shop, I would have a lot of overheads to consider even before starting to make any money. For example, the rent, wages if I was to employ people, insurance costs, utility bills, licenses probably, council taxes, etc, etc, etc. And that's just a bad idea for a computer repair business. Which leads me to the main point of this video. Is the computer repair business dead? Short answer, yes. But wait, there is a longer no answer and I'm going to elaborate. This traditional business model of opening a shop on a high street and uh, getting people to come in, bring their computers to repair, whether it's laptop computers or tablets, that business is dead. There's no money in it. And if you don't believe me, walk on the high street, see how many computer repair shops there used to be and how many of them have actually turned into maybe just a phone repair shop or they've downsized and rented the rest of the shop as a phone repair or even as other multiple businesses. Because the fact of the matter is the computer repair business is dead in 2017. It's been dead for a while. At least the short version is dead. Okay, here are some reasons why the computer repair business as it is the, the traditional way is dead. So number one, computers, laptops, desktops, even tablets are too damn cheap for you to consider repairing your older one. An example, uh, a laptop LCD screen is damaged and a minimum would cost about £40 to get the part new. You used to be able to add probably about £40 on top of this and make £80 for a repair. But with £80 nowadays, you can get yourself a tablet, which in some cases may outperform that older laptop. Most customers are not willing to go to that length. Chances are also, it's not the first time they would be repairing that laptop. There would have been other issues with it, like maybe charging ports or even broken hard disks or reinstalling windows. So all in all, that older laptop is costing so much money. So there's no way customers nowadays want to pay that much money. And for me, for example, if I want to consider repairing these, by the time I add my labor cost, the customer doesn't want to pay and it's not worth for me to just charge a very little money. I won't make a living. So most people are finding the situation quite difficult if they want to keep doing hardware repair. Reason number two, thanks to video tutorials like on YouTube and online forums, more and more people want to repair their own electronics and tech themselves. And who can blame them? For a free tutorial, you can have a go. Obviously, you take a risk, but for the most part, if it's a decent tutorial, then you would be successful if you give it a bit of sweat and time. So why would they want to pay someone else to do it when a lot of platforms are offering a free tutorial? And reason number three, it's far too competitive. Like I said to you, there were a lot of established business and do some research, They've all, many have closed down. The remaining ones are trying to diversify their business model. Okay, there are probably plenty of other reasons, but I'm gonna stick with these ones just to illustrate the point. Okay, to be fair, here's the longer answer. And is the computer repair business dead? No, it's not dead. As long as there's technology, there will be some sort of repair that needs to be done. I just wanted to make it clear that if you want to pursue the traditional opening a computer repair shop, just don't do that. However, here's why you should consider a computer repair business if you do the following. Number one, who am I? And who is anyone to tell you what's going to work and what's not going to work? It's your life, your money, your time, your effort, your decision. So you should go for it. What I do want you to avoid is don't start it with the wrong business model. Number two, do know your limits. Do start something you're passionate in, but however, don't think just because you're passionate about something that you can turn that into earning a living. An example, I love coffee. I probably know above average number of ways to make coffee. I can roast, you know, coffee fresh, and I can grind them and brew them quite different ways. And I love going to coffee shops. Does that entitle me start or open or run a coffee shop? No, just because I'm passionate about coffee, I love the taste, and I know a little bit about going to coffee shops, doesn't make me any better skilled in that field. However, if I want to, what I should do is go and work in a coffee shop, all the various levels, and then decide whether I want to start a business to operate a coffee shop. That I could do. But just because you have a passion about computer repair, does not mean you can turn it into a successful business. Number three, if you're considering a business, despite all I've told you, if you're considering even a computer repair business, then here's the advice. If you have a job, don't quit the job. 
because that job is bringing in income which will continue to fund your business. Also, in this bad economic time, it's not a good idea to just quit your job. I know the frustration, I did it, I just quit my job with no preparation and I know quite a few people who are so frustrated with their jobs that you're very tempted, but I do advise you don't do that. What you could do is if you really hate your job, look for a different job, a less stressful one, and uh, put some time aside to work on your business. But just don't quit it thinking you will make it big quite a bad idea. However, if you're very confident and if you've started working on your business or your self-employment and it's going okay and you need more time, then you could consider reducing your full-time job to part-time. So that way you keep some income coming in and you can also work on your business. Number four, still thinking about doing computer repair? Go for it. Don't open a shop. Start from home, a spare room or your table or a garage or your shed, whatever it is. Just do a few repairs at a time, okay? Build a clientele, and uh, from word of mouth, you, you're gonna get people to bring you more and more stuff. But again, like I said to you before, do know your limits. Don't be a jack of all trades and master of none, which leaves me to point number five. Consider synergy, meaning get in touch with other people in the IT department who are experts in their own field. Example, I'm not very good with networking. Whenever I get a client who wants to do networking stuff, I try to refer them to someone that I know who is good with networking and vice versa. They send me people that need hardware repair or building gaming computers or other software, troubleshooting, etc. So we help each other out and that's what you should do. And successful people are always looking at synergizing what they can't do with other people. Advice number six. You should start a business or computer repair business because this is the best form of practical marketing. Once you're out there, you're going to know what people actually want and you're going to be able to provide them that service or that good. One of the best business advice I ever got was to be successful in business, you have to be in business. And I'm going to put a link below for you to check that video out. And I think it's so simple and yet so profound and so effective. What I mean is this, when I first started, for example, all I was doing was minor repairs and upgrades and installing Linux, etc. When I was going to my clients' places, they used to give me other things like uh, tablets and uh, TVs and printers and other tech stuff, which I had no idea how to fix. And then gradually I started getting a lot of different stuff, which I saw a chance for those various other things which people want. And if you start with an original idea, chances are you're gonna end up selling a good services, which you did not start with. And that's the beauty of business. You never know what's gonna work out for you, but you have to be in that game to be able to play it. Standing outside and looking in is not gonna get you anywhere. Do start it, it's gonna open your doors. Advice number seven, I think we are. Reevaluate your business model. And I'm also gonna put a link below for a case study that they did with someone who wanted to do some desktop publishing. Now, you don't always need big capital. Sometimes you need no capital to start a business. You Because if you think you have to get these thousands of pounds to start a business, then you may just have the wrong business model. I started with practically nothing because some of these things which I was working on, I already had. So you could say I had a zero capital start of a business. Advice number eight. Aside from the fact that you can find products and services which you did not know existed and you may start to trade in them, you will also find fields which open for you. As an example, when I first started, I had no idea I would be doing YouTube one day. And when I started, YouTube was just for sharing my uh, knowledge with you guys. But since then, I've been learning videography, photography, online marketing, video editing, selling of goods and services online, and a lot more. And all these things are giving me more platforms to consider passive income sources. And that's exactly my point. Once you're in the business that you want to do, you will see not only you're going to find goods and services, but you're going to find fields that you could, you could go into. Now, if ever I have to change career one day, I will have so many choices, I wouldn't know what to do, which is a good thing. And I think we are on uh, number eight or number nine now, I'm not too sure. If you do want to start a business, find your USP, your unique selling point. Mine is this. The fact that I film all my repairs with the client's permission and confidentiality respecting and I upload them onto YouTube for them to see and for others to benefit from, my clients like to come to me because of the trust and transparency that I provide. They prefer me over many other shops and I can understand why and I want to keep it that way. Now, if I was traditional and keep taking a lot of different repairs, I would not have time to do the video tutorials. So I usually tell my clients that your device will take a bit longer because because I want to film them, is that okay? And most of them are fine with it. If it's in a hurry, sometimes I just do it and I don't film it. Now, 
A lot of businesses may not want to do that. And I'm also quite happy to keep doing this. I'm not interested into creating a big network of local repairs as much because I'm far more interested in the online education presence, which is what I'm doing right now. Furthermore, it has provided me YouTube AdSense revenue, which is great. And that was really helpful when we had and we still have the family health issue, but that's giving me more opportunity and more encouragement to continue looking into creating more passive income sources. So in conclusion, going back to whether you should start a computer repair business or any business, the main advice is go for it, but do go with some research and keep re-evaluating your business model. And you don't need a lot of capital. In other words, believe in yourself and try things out. And one last pro about doing a computer repair business, you get tons of free electronics and tech that you wouldn't know what to do with it. So you can repair them and sell them off or just tinker with them and experiment. However, that can also be a problem because you may start hoarding junk and you need to be careful of it. And you're gonna be stocking all pile of crap, which eventually will cost you a lot of money. That's the end of today's video. Couple of final notes before for the outro. This video was not sponsored. You will find show notes and links to everything I've talked about in the description below and in the cards above. Any affiliate link to sites like Amazon or eBay is clearly identified and if you click them and follow through with the purchase, it will not cost you anything extra and you will help the channel with a small kickback so it's a win-win for everyone. One more thing, if you want to ask a question, please be as specific as possible, including all the relevant details. You can check out this video, which I did called The Art of Asking the Wrong Question, where I address this very common problem so we can help each other out without getting frustrated and wasting time. That's it for today, folks. Like, dislike, share this video and comment below. And if you found the content helpful, consider subscribing to help the channel and keep you notified of future videos. Once again, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for watching. This was Ash from Hill My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.